Jordan Poole of the Golden State Warriors, and Cam Thomas of the Brooklyn Nets are two of 30 underrated X-Factors who quietly help their team's chances at achieving expectations. Here's every NBA team's secret weapon, players who may not be looked at as crucial components to their team's success right now, but are dangerous options nonetheless. Before continuing, around three quarters of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so please subscribe and join the family. Also, leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. The Dallas Mavericks, Boban Marjanovic. Boban's not only a beast in the low post and undisputedly the NBA's biggest fan favorite, but he's turned into a three-point sniper. There are guys who played in AIA, NAIA soccer. Oh, made it in guys, more love than anybody I know. Bang! The Boston Celtics, Al Horford. When you talk about the Celtics' most important players, we'll always bring up Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, maybe even Marcus Smart and Robert Williams before Horford. But the Celtics bringing back a premier stretch big and quality center in Al opens up everything for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown again. Looking back at Horford's numbers from the 2017 to 2019 playoffs in his first tenure with the Seas, and he averaged at least 14 points on efficient shooting. Also, the Celtics made at least the conference semis in all three of those years. The Brooklyn Nets, Cam Thomas. The 19-year-old number 27 pick in this year's draft led the NBA Summer League in scoring, which led James Harden to say recently that Thomas was better than he was entering the pros. The full statement from James was, quote, obviously Cam was a much better scorer than I was coming out of college. If the Nets are actually getting a better version of rookie James Harden, that could cause some serious problems for other teams in the East, even though the Nets probably won't have Kyrie this year. The New York Knicks, Mitchell Robinson. Currently injured for a second straight season, the Knickerbockers need the block Ness monster healthy in order to be the legit playoff squad we know they can be. You wouldn't believe it, but Robinson's the NBA record holder for the highest field goal percentage in a single season, the Toronto Raptors' Gary Trent Jr. So you could go with Chris Boucher with this one who's currently injured just like Robinson, and I know Gary's a bit of a shot chucker and sometimes attempts low IQ shots. However, Gary proved himself after his 44-point game in Cleveland and game-winning buzzer beater in Tampa. GTJ showed us what happens when his shot starts to fall. So I think if Trent Jr. can be that legit sixth man in the six, then Toronto could get to the playoffs. The Sacramento Kings, Rashawn Holmes. Sacktown center is one of the most underrated big man in basketball as he's quietly posted back-to-back -back seasons of averaging at least 12 and eight. Rashawn's a valuable hustle player who does all the dirty work in terms of his screen setting, vacuum-esque rebounding, and efficient bucket getting. He's an old school big man anyone would take on their roster as he's averaged at least a block in four of his six years in the NBA. The Charlotte Hornets, P.J. Washington. He's had some well-documented off-court struggles, but P.J. Washington's still an up-and-coming stretch big who set career highs nearly across the board in year two of his career. With high-volume shot creators like Melo, Rogier, and now James Booknight, you need all the floor spacing big man you can get. PJ shot 39% from distance in 2021, and he should improve this season. The Atlanta Hawks, Cam Reddish. Reddish came off the disabled list just in time for the Eastern Conference Finals, and he was very impressive for Atlanta in four playoff games, averaging 13 points on 54% shooting from the field and 46% shooting from three. With the Hawks, we talk about Trey Young, John Collins, Kevin Herter, even Gallo or DeAndre Hunter before him, but Reddish is an undervalued piece to Atlanta's core. The Cleveland Cavaliers, Seti Osman. Seti's inconsistent and struggles defensively. The man had an off year in 2021, but at his best, the Turkish killer can put up an efficient 13 to 15 points per night. The Cavaliers will need him to bounce back or it'll be another bottom feeding season for them. I do have hope for the backcourt though with Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. The Miami Heat, Markeith Morris. Lowry and Tucker were rightfully the more popular Miami Heat signings, but the stretch big and former Laker Markeith Morris was a big contributor to the Lakers 2020 title. In the bubble playoffs, Morris shot 42% from three-point range on five deep-range attempts per game. The Washington Wizards, Daniel Gafford. Gafford's not a big name, 
but he's a big man who can be a serious problem up front with his size, athleticism, and defensive instincts. Last year, he ranked 10th among all centers in offensive real plus minus. The Denver Nuggets, Will Barton. Will the thrills gotta stay healthy, but the backup shooting guard in the Mile High City is extremely undervalued. Barton's shot creation was severely missed throughout the 2021 playoffs. The man can manufacture buckets from nothing off the dribble, which has allowed him to post seven seasons where he's averaged at least 11 points. The Indiana Pacers, O'Shea Brissett. O'Shea Brissett broke out into a relied upon perimeter scorer on the wing late in the season last year for Indianapolis. Dropping 23 points while making 10 field goals in the play-in game served as the Canadiens' clutches performance. A game before that, he dropped 31 against his hometown team in Tampa. The Orlando Magic, Robin Lopez. The reason I put Lopez for the Magic's secret weapon is because his mentorship of Orlando's developing centers in Mo Bamba and Wendell Carter Jr. is going to be crucial. Considering Robbins racked up 13 years of NBA mileage, it's on him to share his experiences with the youngins. The Portland Trailblazers, Ben McElmore. The Blazers ranked second among all NBA teams in three-pointers made in 2021, and this season, they picked up yet another deep-range sniper in McElmore. After being traded to the Lakers mid-season, McElmore averaged eight points and two three-point makes per game. The Milwaukee Bucks, Bobby Portis. The heart and soul of the reigning NBA champions, the Bucks were luckily able to re-sign Portis despite losing some other crucial role players in PJ Tucker and Brent Forbes. Bobby may have to increase his production on both ends of the floor to make up for the loss of those two. Regardless, fans in Milwaukee will always have a special place in their heart for the man. The LA Lakers, Talon Horton Tucker. THT's potential breakout year has been a storyline swept under the rug amidst the veteran overhaul, but the Lake Show's attack gets a lot more interesting if Talon takes the next step. The 20-year-old's only 6'4", but his wingspan stretches out to 7'1", and after making solid progression in year two, the sky's the limit for Horton Tucker. The Utah Jazz, Jared Butler. You could go with Boyan Bogdanovich, Jordan Clarkson, or Royce O'Neal, but those are well-known pieces to the Jazz core. For Utah's secret weapon this year, I'm going with the first-year player, Jared Butler. The only rookie featured in this video, I've seen some tremendous scoring poise from Jared in the preseason, and I'm excited to see what 21-22 has in store for him in Salt Lake. The Golden State Warriors, Jordan Poole. Off to an outstanding start in the preseason, Jordan Poole looks extremely improved, which could be a big factor for the Warriors. He averaged 12 per night as a sophomore, which was a four-point increase from his first campaign. And this year, with Klay Thompson returning and solid veterans like Otto Porter Jr. and Iguodala joining, Curry may have all the help he needs to resume Golden State's dynasty. That's especially the case if Jordan Poole's breaking down defenders as another shot creator like he has been so far. The Memphis Grizzlies, DeAnthony Melton. The 23-year-old's product of South Carolina quietly posted his third straight season of averaging at least 1.2 steals per game. Melton still has a lot of untapped potential, but at such a young age, he was already a crucial factor to the Grizzlies' return to the playoffs. The New Orleans Pelicans, Josh Hart. Hart quietly led all shooting guards in rebounds per game last year. Selected by the Jazz and traded to the Lakers in 2017's draft, he's not the best scorer, but Hart's carved out a role in the NBA as a productive all-around player. The Houston Rockets, Daniel House Jr. It may be another season of losing in Houston with the developing Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. trusted as the main options, but just over a year ago, this team was competing for a title. I mean, they only made the second round, but at least they got somewhat close. House Jr. was a big time 3 and D player for the Westbrook and Harden led Rockets, and he's still their most reliable wing on both ends. The Phoenix Suns, Cameron Payne. You instantly think of Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, Mikhail Bridges, even Cam Johnson. Cameron Payne gets overlooked, but he's a legit shot creator in the pick and roll with his quickness and ability to swiftly pull up off the bounce. He was one of the Phoenix Suns' most important role players on their journey to the finals, 
and that says a lot considering the depth of this Suns team. The pickup of Landry Shamit was interesting, and you could argue Shamit's the Suns' secret weapon, but based off Cam's recent playoff run, I'll give him the spot on this list. The Chicago Bulls' Patrick Williams Set for his preseason debut on Friday, I'm really looking forward to the Paws' sophomore campaign. If Chicago has one flaw, it's defense. The pickups of Caruso, Jones Jr., Elise Johnson, and Troy Brown Jr. will help, but the Bulls need a true lockdown, versatile defender around Levine, DeMar, Vooch, and Zoe. Patty Williams can develop into that role this season. The Minnesota Timberwolves, Patrick Beverly. The scrappy, defensive-minded PG goes from LA to Minneapolis. It's good to see Pat Bev happy in a situation where he's got a chance to mentor some young guns with the Timberwolves. Love him or hate him, you can't deny he's an all-out annoyance to any attacking player. The San Antonio Spurs, Bryn Forbes. The sharpshooters headed back to the Alamo City, an extremely underrated pickup for GM RC Buford. The Spurs also picked up Doug McDermott, but after Forbes became an NBA champion in Milwaukee, that should give him a ton of confidence. Forbes ranked fourth right behind teammate Bobby Portis in league-wide three-point percentage during the regular season. The Detroit Pistons, Josh Jackson. Let's face it, he didn't come close to living up to expectations of being the number four overall draft pick. Having said that, Jackson turned around his career in Detroit as he posted a career-high 13.4 points per game. Josh still has a ton of improvement to go, but the 24-year-old could still be a star caliber player in a few years if he stays on track. The OKC Thunder, Theo Maladone. He did only shoot 37% from the field, but Maladone's rookie season saw him post 10 points per game in 27 minutes. He'll have a ton of internal competition with Josh Giddy joining the squad and many more prospects on the way to Oklahoma City. The LA Clippers, Serge Ibaka. LAC hasn't witnessed the true beauty of having one of the greatest shot blockers in NBA history, as Ibaka just hasn't been able to stay healthy in his Clipper tenure so far. He's certainly aging, but if Serge can return soon, the man's wingspan and shooting touch will always make Mafuzi Chef impactful. The Philadelphia 76ers, Tyrese Maxey. If Maxey suddenly morphs into a top 15 to 20 point guard, which I believe he's capable of doing based off his speed and touch around the basket, things become a lot different for Philly. The Ben Simmons drama has brought a dark cloud over the organization for the time being, but Maxey could be just what the Sixers have been looking for at point guard, given he can space it out with a three-point shot. Let me know your favorite team's most slept-on player in the comments. This was D-Flow. Keep watching some of my recent content, and I'll see you next video.